Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 19 and we're reading the whole chapter. Paul at Ephesus. We're going to be talking about four different things. Number one, we're going to be talking about how it's possible for someone to be a disciple and not know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Number two, we're going to be talking about how God used the handkerchiefs of Paul to do great miracles. Number three, we're going to be talking about how important it is to know Jesus, to really know him. Because we will read later on how some people tried to cast out evil spirits. They didn't really know Jesus and they were overpowered by the evil spirits. And number four, we're going to be talking about the goddess Diana. Before we get into this, let's do a little recap. Let's look at the map to see exactly where we are. So in Acts chapter 18, we went from Athens to Corinth. Paul went from Corinth to Sancreia. And now we're going over from Sancreia, we're going over across the Aegean Sea to Ephesus. Now you should be aware that Ephesus was the capital of Asia Minor in this time. And you know, later on in the book of Revelation chapters 2 and 3, we read about seven different churches in Asia Minor. And those churches are all from around this area. So let's start our reading at Acts chapter 19 verse 1. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper country, came to Ephesus and found certain disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They said to him, No, we haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. This is a very, very interesting point here. We have disciples. In context, we have disciples of the Lord, okay? And they did not even hear of the Holy Spirit since they believed, let alone being baptized in the Holy Spirit since they believed. Now, there are certain Christians that believe that, you know, it takes the Holy Spirit to really even believe. And once you believe and accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you have the Holy Spirit. But is it possible to have the Holy Spirit and not even know it? Is it possible to have the Spirit of God, the Most High God in all of the universe, the greatest and biggest God of all the universe? Is it possible to have the Spirit of God in your life and not even know it? Verse 3, Paul said, Into what then were you baptized? They said, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe in the one who would come after him, that is, in Yeshua, Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke with other languages and prophesied. Notice here it talks about them speaking in other languages, in other words, in other tongues. Also note that not every time the Spirit of God came upon people, they spoke in tongues. There were a few times it happened, but not every time. Verse 7, they were about 12 men in all. They entered into the synagogue and spoke boldly for a period of three months, reasoning and persuading about the things concerning God's kingdom. But when some were hardened and disobedient, speaking evil of the way, see the disciples of Jesus in those days called themselves the way, speaking evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. This continued for two years, so that all those who lived in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus both Jews and Greeks. God worked special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were carried away from his body to the sick, and diseases departed from them, and evil spirits went out. Now, there is a principle in the spiritual realm. Physical things can be used by spirits, okay? Spirits can attach themselves to, to physical things, okay? Now, witches know this, okay? People that are involved in the occult know this. You know, they use different items in their rituals, you know, because they know that these items, these physical items can be 
like mediums to the spiritual world. Okay? So this is not just a principle that the occult knows about, but this is a universal principle. This is a universal law, okay? Even the Spirit of God can use physical things. You, can, you might say it this way, even the Spirit of God can be attached to physical items, okay? That's why the handkerchiefs and the aprons that Paul had on his body when he was preaching were used to perform miracles. Because the spiritual power, the spirit behind the message of Paul, or you can even say the spirit behind Paul, was attached to that physical item. Verse 13, but some of the itinerant Jews, exorcists, took on themselves to invoke over those who had the evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. There were seven sons of one Siva, a Jewish chief priest who did this. Notice, they said to the spirits, to the evil spirits, we adjure you by the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, okay? They relied on the authority of Paul. They relied on the relationship that Paul had with Jesus. They didn't know Jesus themselves. You know, there are a lot of Christians today that do the same thing. You know, well, I believe in the Jesus that so-and-so preaches. Or like they idolize one particular preacher to the point where it's like, if that preacher says it, it's got to be true. And this is what the sons of Sceva did, basically. They relied on, on Paul's authority. They didn't know Jesus for themselves. They didn't know for themselves. God wants you to seek him for yourself, to know him for yourself, to know the scriptures for yourself. There's no excuse not to. The evil spirit answered, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? The man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. This became known to all, both Jews and Greeks, who lived at Ephesus. Fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Two things here. Notice, because these sons of Sceva, now th think of it, these are the sons of the high priest, and it says they were exorcists, okay? That should tell you that this isn't the first time they did this stuff, okay? But this is the first time they used the authority of the name of Yeshua, but they didn't use it on their own behalf. They said, in the name of Yeshua whom Paul preaches, because they didn't have a direct link to God, they used Paul as a link, they became secondary, and the evil spirits overpowered them, beat them, stripped them naked, and sent them away, okay? That is a very, very important lesson to learn. You have to know Jesus for yourself. You have to know God for yourself. Do diligent study for yourself. Don't rely on this particular famous preacher or that particular respected preacher. Do the work yourself. Do your homework. And number two, it says fear fell on them all. Again, we see the fear of God falls on these people. Fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. So this was the fear of God that caused the name of Jesus to be magnified. When was the last time the fear of God fell upon the congregation that you attend? In order to have true Book of Acts Christianity, we must have the fear of God falling upon the people. Verse 18, many also of those who had believed came confessing and declaring their deeds. The fear of God was so strong, people came and confessing their sins. Many of those who practiced magical arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. Listen, it's very important to take the evil things from your old life and burn them. Why burn them? Because you must dispose of them for good. Why must you dispose of them for good? Because as we said before, evil spirits can attach themselves to physical objects. 
Let me tell you my own personal story here, my own personal experience with this. When I first got born again, I had nightmares every single night. Nightmares every single night. Every night I had nightmares. And it got to the point where I just didn't even want to, I, I, I hated to sleep. It, nightmares every night. And then I read a book about this. I read a book about how evil spirits, familiar spirits they call them, can attach themselves to objects, even something as simple as a pen, you know, or anything else, especially a book, okay? So then I thought, wait a second, I've got books, I've got music, I've got lots of different things, posters and pictures of things that wasn't godly at all, okay? Wasn't according to the scriptures at all, okay? So I took all of those books, I took all of those pictures, all of those posters, that music, okay? I even took my old clothes that promoted ungodly things and I burned it, okay? And after I burned it, those nightmares stopped immediately, okay? It's very important if you're born again, go through everything, okay? Destroy that which you cannot burn. Destroy it for good, okay? Burn what you can. Burn what you can. It is important to do so. That way, you burn the legal ground that Satan may have in your life. They counted their price and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. It says here in the notes, 50,000 pieces of silver here, probably referred to 50,000 drachmas. If so, the value of the burned books was equivalent to about 160 man years of wages for agricultural laborers. That is a lot. 160 man years. That's a lot. So the word of the Lord was growing and becoming mighty. Now after these things had ended, Paul determined in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. Having sent into Macedonia two of those who served him, Timothy and Erastus, he himself stayed there in Asia for a while. About that time there arose no small disturbance concerning the way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines of Artemis, brought no little business to the craftsmen whom he gathered together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, you know that by this business we have our wealth. You see and hear that not at Ephesus alone, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away many people, saying that they are no gods that are made with hands. Not only is there danger that this our trade come into disrepute, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis will be counted as nothing and her majesty destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worships. You see, these guys were just concerned about the money. And that is what it's really all about in the world today. We've got a lot of idols in the world, including money itself. We've got things that are idols, houses, cars, other things, you know, hobbies that people have passions and pleasures that people have, idols, celebrities, idols, okay? But for the most part, this is all just about money. And a lot of people attack preachers, say, oh, these preachers, all they want is money. They're just asking for money all the time. What about your idols? What about your idols? When they heard this, they were filled with anger and cried out, saying, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. The whole city was filled with confusion, and they rushed with one accord into the theater. Having seized Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel. When Paul wanted to enter in to the people, the disciples wouldn't allow him. Certain also of the Asiarchs, being his friends, sent to him and begged him not to venture into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was in confusion. Most of them didn't know why they had come together. 
They brought Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. Alexander beckoned with his hand and would have made a defense to the people. But when they perceived that he was a Jew, all with one voice for a time of about two hours cried out, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Think about this. They were crying that out for two hours. I mean, wow. Talk about, you know, chanting and, you know, brainwashing and causing a buzz. Two hours. When the town clerk had quieted the multitude, he said, You men of Ephesus, what man is there who doesn't know that the city of the Ephesians is temple keeper of the great goddess Artemis and of the image which fell down from Zeus? Seeing then that these things can't be denied, you ought to be quiet and to do nothing rash. For you have brought these men here, who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemers of your goddess. If therefore Demetrius and the craftsmen who are with him have a matter against anyone, the courts are open and there are proconsuls. Let them press charges against one another. But if you seek anything about other matters, it will be settled in the regular assembly. For indeed, we are in danger of being accused concerning today's riot, there being no cause. Concerning it, we wouldn't be able to give an account of this commotion. When he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. And that concludes the reading for Acts chapter 19. And as you go your way, seek God with all your heart. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.